All right, everybody, and welcome back to the office. Uh, the Q of the day is a pretty, it's an interesting question, uh, but really what it is, it is a question that is one of the uh, basics of basics that we should be covering, and not just here, but we should be covering this a lot more. So the question is, uh, this is from Kat. She says, hey, Dan, can you explain why we should transfer our Bitcoin and crypto to a ledger? Which is a pretty good question, right? Why would we have to, you know, transfer everything, especially when we're used to banks doing everything for us? Uh, Kat states, why can't we just keep it on the exchange? Is that unsafe? It seems easier, like a bank. What if we lost our passwords phrase? Is all lost? Isn't it easier for a company to retrieve a password? Is it a must? Another gadget in my home? What a pain. So, this is a great question, and that is why we included the last article where we talked about the, the different exchanges that are getting hacked. And this is not just happened like uh, recently. This isn't like a, uh, a non-normal occurrence. Over the years, uh, there has been many different exchanges that have been hacked. And uh, one of those, one of the biggest ones, was Mt. Gox. And it was like around 300 million, 400 million, somewhere around there. Uh, correct me in the comments section. I'm sure uh, you people know uh, the exact numbers. But... It's one of those things where if we have a, a hot wallet, uh, as they call it, like we, we talked about in the last uh, article, uh, it's a much easier for these hackers to get in there. And it's just sitting there right for the taking. So the easiest way is to uh, shift everything over onto a nano ledger, which is called cold storage, uh, because it, there's no access to, you know, from the internet. So hackers can't get in there. Uh, unless they have a quantum computer, which uh, that might happen in 20 years, who knows, or two or five if you're you know, a conspiracy theorist, or maybe it's even here right now, who knows. But uh, the whole, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, the whole thing is, is that if you want to be completely safe and then really get into it and become your own bank, then you should really look towards a nano ledger. And this is one of the things that uh, it uh, frightened me in the beginning, uh, but I also appreciate it now more so as I've gotten to realize just how dirty and ugly the banks are. Look, uh, the banks have been screwing us for years, and they were responsible for that 2008 financial crash. That's essentially why uh, Bitcoin was created in the first place. So when we start to talk about, you know, be your own bank, you can be your own bank. You don't have to deal with those, you know, all the different banks and all their crappy um, interest rates that are just awful, all their fractional reserve lending, and all the different nonsense that they have to, you know, go through and jump to the hoops just to put your money somewhere. So why even go through that, that process? Just do a little bit more work and you can become your own bank. So I, I want to go over this question again just to make sure that, you know, I answered everything in detail. So um, why can't we keep on the exchanges? Okay, we answered that. Uh, Actually, no, I didn't answer that. There's a little caveat. And the caveat is, is that you should definitely take everything off of the exchanges and put it in your nano if you want to be 100% secure. However, uh, in my exit strategy, I talk about leaving a portion of your crypto on the exchange as things start to go up and starts to... Um, get into that bull run. See, the problem with, with bull runs, and this is more of an advanced strategy, but the problem with the bull runs is that once prices start to climb, there's a weird mentality that goes on. Um, and that mentality is, well, if it just 10x, then you know tomorrow or next week or a month, it might 100x. So I don't really want to sell anything right now. And that's the problem with taking profits. However, if you leave a little bit on the exchange, and I'm not saying 100%, I'm saying a little percent, 10%, 15%, and uh, go ahead and, and check out the uh, uh, bull run strategies uh, or exit plans that I have for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. And if you're able to put things on the exchange, uh, then it can trigger automatically and we can set up these orders that just trigger without you having to do anything and you can take profits and you don't have to deal with the emotional roller coaster of actually selling your cryptocurrency. So that is one of the things I, I, I recommend, and it's one of those caveats I talk about. Also, um, another caveat is this, is if <clears throat> you want to gain interest on your cryptocurrency, um, you're not going to leave it in your nano ledger because you can stake it. You can put it onto other different platforms, such as Voyager, such as Celsius, such as uh, BlockFi. Uh, even crypto.com, uh, they have an interest if you leave your cryptocurrency on their exchanges. So the problem with that is 
Of course, you are not in control of your cryptocurrency. However, you're um, resigning that to these exchanges, to these entities, so they can pay you uh, an interest. So that's just one of those things that, to think about. So for me, like when I talk about these things, like when I first got into cryptocurrency, it was like, you need to take 100% of your cryptocurrency and get it off the exchanges because if it's not your keys, it is not your crypto. And uh, that was the model that we've been living with for quite a long time. But now as things have changed a little bit, as time has gone on, there is a little bit more of a leeway in that whole thinking. Now, again, you can do whatever you want to. If you want to put everything on a nano ledger, put everything on a nano ledger. It's the safest that you will ever have. And uh, it won't, I mean, it hasn't been hacked uh, yet. So we'll see what happens. But uh, you can do that. You can do what I do, which is to leave some of the exchanges for the bull run. Also put uh, part of your portfolio into a type of uh, platform that will pay you interest for doing absolutely nothing, which is way more than the, the shoddy banks that are out there. So uh, it's just up to you. Me personally, I have 25% of my entire portfolio in Celsius Network right now. In Celsius, I have 25% of all my cryptocurrency because I trust it. And uh, trust is a currency that you can't buy. And um, I believe in Alex Mashinsky and what he's got going on over there. Now that there are other platforms, I could definitely do it. But for right now, 25%, that's where it is. The rest, Nano Ledger, and a little bit uh, on the exchanges right now for when the bull run actually, or the parabolic bull run actually happens. So hopefully that answers the question a little bit more thoroughly. Um, and then Cat states, is that unsafe? It's unsafe. <laughs> anyway, look at it, it's unsafe. It seems easier like a bank. And this is one of those things that we've all dealt with this for the longest of times, which is just to trust the bank, just to put money into the bank. And it's, it's right there, FDIC insured, $250,000. So it's not like a big deal. And then, of course, if you do any kind of transfer or something like that, it's the response of the bank to you know actually pay you back if something screws up or if they get robbed or whatever else. Once we give up that power to the bank and we freely gave this away, once we do that, or once we did that, we are essentially bending the knee to the big banks and allow them to do whatever they want to do with our money. And we have to jump through all the hoops to you know, get a bank account, to use our own money, to transfer our own money, um, and to, you know, just to be able to say, hey, you know, I have a net worth somewhere, which is in some bank which they're kind of screwing me anyhow because you know they're taking all this and they're, they're loaning it all out and uh, you know whatever. Whatever they want to do because I have no recourse. Well, now you do. You have a recourse, which is cryptocurrency digital assets, and you can put you know, part of your, at least part of your, of your money into a different type of asset class and uh, you can give you know, one of these fingers to the banks. <laughs> so that's it. And then the next one is, what if we lost our password phrase? So first of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to direct you if you haven't watched my nano ledger video yet it goes over what are private keys what are public keys what is a hot wallet what is a cold wallet what is everything that you need to know as far as a nano ledger and just everything that I, I just talked about so and then password phrases or mnemonic phrases or however you want to uh, people use different terms so the thing is this is one of the aspects of being your own bank if you lose your passphrase and then you lose your nano ledger there is no recourse that's it so there's different um, products that, that you can uh, buy out there one is the stonebook or shieldfolio.com i'm going to link that in the uh, description they were sold out uh, for for quite some time and it's just a it's just a book that is uh very hard it's not indestructible uh, it's pretty much waterproof it's not fireproof uh, it's smudge proof. It's time proof. It's uh, I mean, but whatever you write in there is, is going to last a heck of a lot longer than if you write on a piece of paper. So um, if you look at something like that, I'll link in the description. But yeah, if the password phrase goes away, then that's it. I believe that there's going to be a bigger market for password phrases and storage and everything like that. I've seen different products where it's actually in steel. Uh, people actually etch it into steel, so that's indestructible. I mean, it's Unless it's like a you know super hot or something like that, but uh, the best thing that I found that is mo the most practical and the most uh, uh, price relevant would be that Shield Folio or Stone Book, and uh, I have one myself, and I have all my passphrases in there, and it's fantastic, and uh, it's portable. So what are you gonna do? And then uh, 
The last thing it says here is, isn't it easier for a company to retrieve a password? Oh, you better believe it. Super easy, right? If And one of the whole big issue, problems that uh, these banks usually have, not a problem, but um, they have a whole service center for this, is just pa people losing their passwords. So it's, and they're like, hey, no problem. We'll have tons of people on staff to help you get into your account as long as you keep feeding us the money so we can do what we want to do and we can kind of rake you over the coals. <laughs> and that's how it is. So uh, it's super easy for them just to, you know, retrieve the password. Sure, no problem. Come back to us. Come back to us. Coddle us. No big deal. You're safe right here. Nobody has to go away. Just keep putting your money in here and don't look at what's happening behind the curtain. So that's it. So hopefully I answered that question for, for Kat. I wanted to really go into detail. These are some of the things that, uh, especially as new people come in, we need to teach them. And that's why I am working diligently to get my free website up, which will have all the different information out there as far as like what cryptocurrency digital assets are, uh, how to do certain things, how to you know transfer your money, how to uh, do all the, the things we just talked about right now in a simple to use format. Uh, which has like like a QA and a section and all these different things. So I'll definitely get that uh, hopefully in the next month or so. So that's it. So uh, hopefully that answers your questions. Uh, let's jump back. All right, that's it. So thanks for sticking around with me to the end. I really appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, I mean, two ones going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure because YouTube does all that. And uh, that's it for today. So check those videos out when you've got time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me. And I'll see you on the next one.